The function in the last video is used to report the mean and the standard error. Suppose I wanted to also report a 95% confidence interval for the mean. Here I'll construct a confidence interval. The QT function is used to identify the 97.5th quantile of the T distribution with n-1 degrees of freedom. There might be some temptation to concatenate the confidence interval with the current results being reported from the function. In some instances, this might be fine, but it isn't a very clear way to organize the results. For example, what if another user mistakenly thought the first two values were the confidence interval and the last two were the mean and the standard error? That could be disastrous. When multiple objects are being returned from a function, it's usually helpful to return them in a list. But even now, things might still be a little bit unclear. For this reason, it's useful to add names to each element of the list. And before I forget, I should update the name of the function. I'm going to name it getCI for get confidence interval. There's one more change I want to make before moving on, making the function slightly more general by allowing for a different confidence level. I'm going to do this using a second argument called level. Since a 95% confidence level is so commonly used, I'll specify a 0.95 confidence level as the default. Next, I need to make some slight adjustments to the body of the function to make use of this new argument. I can compute the upper percentile for the confidence interval, then provide this as a substitute for 0.975. Now I can run the function without specifying a level to get a standard 95% confidence level. Or if I want a different confidence level, say 99%, I can easily make that request. Suppose a user input a value for a level of 99 rather than 0.99 for the level argument. In this application, it would be nice if the function failed elegantly and communicated why there was an error rather than simply reporting a warning. This will be the topic of the next video.